the October 28th, 2014 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting to order. Um, the first order of business is to approve the minutes of August 26th, 2014, which was our last meeting. So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. Any discussion or anything? All in favor? All right, the August 26, 2014 minutes are approved. Uh, the next order of business is the first item of new business, which is to hear the request of Brian and Marianne Harrington for a variance to add a garage to their house at 5 Bayberry Lane, map U19, lot 58. Brian or Marianne? Brian? Yes. Stage is yours. Yes. So I think everybody has the uh, packet that I put together and the house when we bought it uh, in 2000 uh, has always had a one car garage on it. Not sure why it was originally built that way. As you see in the packet, um, I just kind of took the shots from Google Earth so my neighbors didn't worry if I was driving around taking photos of all their houses. Um, but for whatever reason, every other house on the loop has a two-car garage. Um, we've always had the one car. And uh, I've been working on the house over the past 14 years. The garage is always something I've been looking to get to. And then last winter happened, and we said, boy, it's really time to see if we could do a two-car garage here just to get the cars in and be able to uh, you know, make life a little bit easier here. So basically the way that the lot line works is that uh, on the left side there it is uh, at an angle and so currently the distance from the lot line to that back corner of the garage is 27 feet. I understand that a 25 foot uh, setback is typically required. What we would uh, be asking to do is to add 10 feet onto the garage. It would, I'm told that it would probably make sense to tear down the garage that's there from 1979, you know, got cracks in the foundation, that sort of thing, and rebuild a new two-car garage there. But basically, the addition would be, additional space would be 10 feet out. And that would reduce the setback to about 17 and a half feet. Um, and so that's really what we're asking for is that variance to be able to use a 17 and a half foot setback. I think that, you know, in terms of uh, sight lines and what neighbors might see with the new footprint versus now uh, is pretty minimal because if you look at, um, I have a sheet in your packet. Oops. that shows just kind of an overview of how the lots lay out and the house that is uh, on that side of us is kind of turned, it's set back and it's turned facing the side of our house. Uh, their view really wouldn't change, there are trees in between. Um, and so for anybody that is that can view the house, I think it's basically gonna be the same view. We're not looking for a second floor or anything like that. It's just a functional garage that we're looking for. So I did go to each of the abutting neighbors just to make sure that they understood what we were looking to do and see if they had uh, any concerns about it and nobody had any concerns about what we we're doing. So that's the basic uh, approach and yeah, I'd love to take any questions that you might have. Uh, did you look at all at repositioning the garage to the other side of the house? Um, I, I did consider that, and um, it really would mean on the other side of the house uh, taking down a decent amount of trees um, to get a garage in there. And, you know, of course, tearing down what's there, taking up the driveway, and, and the whole deal. So it's, it's a lot more surgery. There is a uh, mudroom that is just inside the garage. Uh, it's about 
seven feet. And um, so that would be another thing that would be an odd thing that you'd have to do somehow. Is build your a kitchen abut the mudroom? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So uh, for flow, it would be odd, and it would be odd to put a roof over it and kind of, mm -hmm. yeah, figure that out. Thank you. It looks like um, on this plan that shows kind of lot 450 and then the layout that, as you said, the lot line kind of goes at a pretty good angle. Do you, and the kind of minimum setback area is going to be just over 17 feet. Is the front part still over 25 or close to 25? It kind of looks like it's a pretty um, small yeah. area. I, um, if I use a real basic approach and I just kind of take basically a parallel line, um, basically if you drew, drew a diagonal on that, on that garage, about half the garage would be just over. But that, that front tip of the garage would be about 25 feet. I don't have that exact. Yeah, thing. but it looks close. It's yeah. very close, yeah. yeah. So it's not the whole garage that's going into Correct. the setback. It's really just, you know, maybe a half to. It's that back corner, yeah. Yeah. So looking at the first year top photo, five baby Bay lane. Yep. Um, or directly from the front, it looks like the tree, it's hard, maybe hard to tell from the tree view. Um, Photo, but it looks like the trees actually come relatively close. How many trees do we have to take out for the action, for actually the, the new structure being there and also for working on it in the construction? Um, there are two trees that are closest. I'm not sure typically what um, an arborist would say in terms of uh, how far the roots mm -hmm. come and need to come. Um, the new, when you go 10 feet out, you would be about. Um, another, say, eight feet away from those trees. Hmm. So um, I would think that in the worst case, yeah, a couple of those trees would need to come down. There's a few smaller trees beyond those um, in between the two houses. I'd like to say that this is one of the most complete packets that we've gotten for one of these oh, great. applications, and thank you for that. Thanks. I love the internet for the uh, <laughs> photos and everything. Street view is a really good thing. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And so you have the rat, the Ratners next door on, obviously, on board with this. Yes. Yeah, so they it looks are. Like they'd be the most. And number seven would be the most impacted. They would be the most uh, impacted, and they are uh, actually the last name on the, the list there. Uh, any other questions for Mr. Harrington? Thank you. Okay. Thank ben, you. did we get any comments on this application? I, I received one voicemail <laughs> in support in addition to the seven signatures in support and uh, no, nothing negative. Okay. And Sorry, Chair, can I open one more uh, question to the applicant? Sure. Thank you. On the lot, if we remove a number of trees, would, we, would you suggest possible ways to um, reduce the view from number seven Bayberry Lane to the view on the garage? For example, if the variance is approved and you have to cut down a few trees, Essentially, the people in uh, the Rattlers will have a greater view of your side garage. Uh, there are ways that you would uh, ameliorate that, thank you, so that you can replace the trees, you have shrub, storm wall, what, what would your suggestions be there? Yeah, there, um, those two trees are, are pines, and so um, it would be the, the trunk of those trees, which are, you know, they're, they're decent sized trunk. Uh, the, the branches don't start until, you know, much higher up. Um, there are some smaller trees behind those, in between uh, those trees in the Rattler's house. But absolutely, you know, we could, um, we could add either new trees or, or shrubs uh, there. That's uh, not... Ben may know the answer to this question, but you know, replacing trees is, is an option. Yep. Um, um, I think the subdivision has that provision. But anyway, so the, the point here is that those trees are very large, um, 60 footers. So it's, it's, 
you know, some some sort of screen, yep. some sort of thing to have. Um, I take your point about the the, the width of the, the, the trees and the branches are much higher. So what they're looking through is some trees, but um, they can see your house, but they're blocked as it were by the right. trunk of the tree. Um, so you you would not be adverse to replacing some type of shrubbery that would. No, I, you know, in terms of uh, where it is, the trunks. I think one shrub could provide that same uh, that same shade, um, you know, from the view. I think a different view of that. Uh, the reason being is that you're bringing your house closer to that, mm -hmm. uh, so that your, the object is closer to the tree. So when you stand there, you may you're going to see more of your house. That's what you're saying, yeah. Um, so that's why I query whether there is whether you're going to be worse. No, that's that's not that's not an issue there. If you look at the um, the second picture down, the angle that their house is on, and the number uh, sorry, the second picture down on the first page, there's quite a lot of trees in between those two houses for the size of the lots and kind of the density of development. It doesn't seem like even if worst case scenario, you have to take out two trees that are eight feet away which maybe you will, maybe you won't, who right. knows, you know, that that's going to be a significant impact. Right, yeah, there are, there are smaller trees behind those, but if, if it's the kind of thing where it changed um, the view, yeah, I don't have a problem with replacing, you know, tree or, or bush that takes up that same you know, amount of space so that they don't see any more garage than they normally would. Any further questions for Mr. Harrington? Thank you, Mr. Harrington. Great, thank you. Uh, any public comment? Hearing no public comment, uh, we'll move on to board discussion. Um, like Joanne said, this is a pretty complete application in my view. Um, at least from my perspective, the issue of the trees, I don't think that's in the ordinance. That's an analysis that we have to undertake and we've already had the um, direct abutters who are on that side say that they don't have any problem with this, so I'm not too concerned with that. Uh, they could cut the trees down even if they weren't doing this work. So um, that doesn't really raise a huge concern for me. Any other comments or thoughts? I think the only other uh, thing you could talk about as far as whether um, there's any practical difficulty is that you could potentially reposition that garage on the other side, but I think as the applicant pointed out, we've got a mode room on the other side, the right. kitchen's on the other side, we've got a cut down a ton of trees. Right. I just you know, so I, I, I think he's addressed you know my concern there. So you know, I, I agree. I think it's a pretty complete application. I think he's made the case um, for the variance. And actually and actually uh, looking at the size of the proposed garage, it actually wouldn't really fit when you step back from the right side. <coughs> Just guessed it. Looks like it would be too close. So I don't yeah, I mean, it would be adding. I mean, the garage is probably 30 feet. The, the proposed, the total size of the garage would be about 30 feet. So if you move that to the other side, I think. Yeah, you're, you're going to have the same problem. Could have the yeah. same problem. Um, any other thoughts, comments, discussion? Anybody like to make a motion? I'll move that we approve the variance request for five Bayberry Lane. Okay, second. I'll second it. All in favor? All right, so seven nothing. The variance request has been approved. I'm going to read the uh, findings of fact. <clears throat> One, variance request for map U19, lot 58, 5 Bayberry Lane, applicants Brian and Marianne Harrington. Two, Brian and Marianne, Marianne Harrington are the owners of the record of the subject property. Three, 5 Bayberry Lane is a non conforming lot in the RA district. Required setbacks are 25 feet from the front property line, 25 feet from the side, and 20 feet from the rear property line. Four, the proposed garage addition results in a side setback of 17 feet, four inches from the side property line. The front and rear setbacks are compliant. 
additional findings of fact. The need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. Two, the granting of a variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of the abutting properties. Three, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. Four, no other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner. Five, the granting of a variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. And six, the property is not located in whole or in part within shoreland areas as described in Title 38, Section 435. All those in favor of the findings of fact and additional findings of fact? So nothing. Thank you, Mr. Harrington. Moving on to the second item of new business, uh, to hear the request of Sandra Beshard for a conditional use permit for a home business yoga studio at our house on 6 Wheeler Road, map U16, lot 2. And if I mispronounce your name, I apologize. It's Beshard. Beshard. <laughs> well, namaste. So, um, yeah, so I would like to open a little yoga studio out of my home. Basically, I teach yoga in the area at different yoga studios, and I have a following of people that would like some private one-on-one. Um, -on -one. And so there'd be infrequent classes. I, I know the home, we, we closed on it in August, and it was zoned to have an in-home business. So, um, and I have the room, so I thought this would be a nice opportunity to spread yoga to people who want to explore it more deeply. Mm -hmm. So. Is this the Hewitt old home? Yeah, All right. yeah, Joni. I didn't get my orientation, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's kind of what I thought, okay. How many folks would you expect to have at any one time for oh. the business? Well, actually, it, there'd be more privates, so it'd be one. But um, I think the most would be maybe four. So one to four? Yeah, one to four, yeah. And would you be the only, uh, the only person teaching yes. or leading the class? Yeah. It's just kind of like I have a following, I teach in different studios and I have a following and they're like, can we get together one on one with you? You know, so it'd be either a small little group or a one on one. Do you envision having regularly scheduled classes or will this be an appointment only sort of thing? Um, there might be like two to three scheduled classes a week. Yeah. But not, I mean, I'm not trying to be greener postures. <laughs> I work there, but I'm not trying to be that, yeah, so. Do you anticipate putting up any signage? I would like to put up a sign, yeah. How many uh, cars can you fit in your driveway? I mean, I see it's, um, yeah, it's a, I'm an oval, but. Yeah, I could probably fit like six to seven, but I don't see that being the situation. Not actually what I'm going after. I mean, you're more or less limiting yourself to, I guess, five cars a day, right? By virtue right. of the, the number of vehicle trips per day? Exactly. Okay. But the driveway itself has the capacity to, exactly. to satisfy five cars if they all came for a class for Absolutely. that day? Absolutely. Yeah. Does this space exist in in the house today? As a yes, it does. Are you, are you converting a, an existing Well, space our space? garage, we've kind of in, um, transformed that into a, a nice sacred space to practice. Yeah. It's heated, so I was like, yeah, that's mine. <laughs> so. This probably goes without saying, but I anticipate this isn't going to be Metallica yoga. It's going to be a pretty quiet space. Yeah. No, it's no loud quiet. cranking music. No, no, no. Is there such a <laughs> thing? There, there, there's, there's, no, I don't, I don't know what that is, but I don't. Hip hop yoga, so I don't know what that is. Yeah, that's at GPY on Friday nights. Check it out, but no, I don't teach that. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. Can you sign me up for the Metallica yoga? It's not yoga, it's loud yoga. Yeah, no, that's not it. Ben, did we get any comments on this one? No, we didn't. <clears throat> and does notice go out on this to all of you? Yes. Um, can I assume 24 by 24 on the signage is for the signage ordinance? I didn't. Yes, it is. Down, four, four square feet. And they're essentially across the street from the old Jordans anyway. I mean, where there's signage, I believe. You know. Yeah. Right? Mm hmm that's really why I asked if it was the old Hewitt house, so I could the, yes, get my that's where I am. Yeah, I thought it was across from Georgia. Yep, right. Mm -hmm. it, it's almost in the BA district. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. who, who is who are your closest, or what are the closest, I guess, residences? There's a um, woman across. The, I haven't met anybody really yet, but there's a lady across the street. She's a DO of some sort, but I don't, I don't know her name, but. Um, is that on Wheeler? On Wheeler, yeah. Sort of on the corner. Yes, on so way. I'm on, yes, she's on the other corner. Well, I could throw in, y'all get your first class free. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> if that helps. You neither solicit nor accept that offer. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to come in one car, okay? <laughs> um, any other questions for Ms. Bouchard? Thank you. Okay. Uh, seeing nobody um, else in the room, I'm assuming there's no public comment. And uh, Ben, we've already asked. You haven't heard anybody opposing this? Or I have not received any it. comments on okay. the application. Um, I'll open it up for board discussion. I have a. I just have a question. If if we were to uh, to approve this, would would the approval be limited to sort of the number of vehicle trips and presented in the application? It's limited by the application, yeah. yeah. I'll just say that Ms. Bouchard's application or presentation appear to meet the standards set forth in 1913 of the ordinance. So I'm certainly in favor of approving it. I don't see any real reason to to not do so. I think the only question I had, again, was when I mentioned it, it as my initial question, just as far as how large that, that driveway is, and the application does limit it to five cars really per day, and that driveway looks like it's, even if they all came at the same time, could, um, you know, could house those, those cars. So I don't think it's a safety issue as far as Old Ocean House Road or Wheeler Road or anything like that. So I'm, you know, I'm supportive of the application as well. And, and just to correct what Mike said, I think it, it meets the requirements of 1955, um, which is the conditional use permit section, and it meets the definition of home business, which is in 1913. Right. Um, just I want to clarify that. Um, but yeah, I. I it seems to meet the requirements to me and, and certainly the definition of a home business. Me, yep. There's one other thing the board should consider. Uh, the, the septic system, and I, I talked to the applicant about this, it's a, it's a sizable septic system and it's only the applicant and her uh, husband in living in the house. And the flow going from the yoga studio would be relatively small. If the house was used to capacity, say if there were 
six people living in the house, we would ask the septic system to be expanded. Uh, and, be, and because the home business can carry forward into the future, we may want to consider a condition that if the house is lived in to its capacity, that uh, the, the septic system should be reevaluated uh, uh, for the home business. To the extent that there is max capacity would be effectively what? Uh, the five clients plus the residents? Yeah, I, I think six people would be a reasonable number if, if there is a time that six people or more are living in the house, that the septic system should be reevaluated for the home business. How many bedrooms are in the house? Chris? Um, but presumably the home business authorization would carry forward even it's not specific to the person that lives there right that's correct um, so should we call it the home business authorization a number of bedrooms is the yes. septic system sized for a certain number of bedrooms like yeah, yeah. Four bedrooms or six bedrooms or that that would be a good way to do it would just to say that the home business for septic purposes the home business is considered to be a bedroom and uh, and we did talk about the flow and we calculated a few numbers and it it, it would be it would be definitely would be less than a bedroom for septic capacity so I, th I think that'd be the right way to do it so for septic capacity purposes purposes the home business is considered to be a, uh, an not, occupied bedroom or a nine, nine, 90 gallons per day or, or one bedroom worth of the septic design. Okay. Yeah. Septic designs generally happen in bedrooms. One bedroom worth of yeah. septic? Mm -hmm. I think that gets to both issues, both the kind of if the home business itself grows in size than if it exceeds kind of the one bedroom use that gives room for the town to look back at that. Likewise, the kind of occupancy of the house. Because I think both things would be an issue, right? Yes. Um, so it's one bedroom worth of se septic capacity or septic use? E either. Okay. For septic capacity purposes, the home business is considered to be one bedroom worth of septic use is yes kind of speaking in the correct language yes of septic systems josh may i suggest that you change the word worth to equivalent or something like sure that? for septic capacity purposes the home business is considered to be equivalent one bedroom of septic use that's better <coughs> any other thoughts or comments on the board on the on the uh, the notice here, there's not much land. So worst case scenario, you know, is there space in the back of that lot to modify the septic design? So it looks like that's the case. So it should not be an issue here. I just wanted to mention that now, so that we can just quickly. My, my query is that if it doesn't meet capacity at some some data where there's a problem with the design, then we'll just have to fix it. And, how we'll and if they can't fix it, then they can't they would have to stop expand the, the studio or stop the, stop the use. I mean, I'd be comfortable with it. as long as we have that condition there. They can do a lot with separate too. All right. Um, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the request for a conditional use permit for a home business at Six Wheeler Road, map U16, lot two. And do we want to add that? Yeah, I'll add that condition, okay. Okay. Sub subject to the condition that we. Okay, subject to the condition we talked about. Second. All in favor? All right, so that passes seven nothing. Findings of fact. 
This is a request for a conditional use permit for a home business at 6 Wheeler Road, map U16, lot 2. Two, Greg and Sandra Bichard are the owners of record of the subject lot. Three, the proposal is consistent with the definition of home business found in section 19-1-3 of the Town of Cape Elizabeth Zoning Ordinance. Four, the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Five, the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. Six, the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. Seven, the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. Eight, there are no proposed external alterations to the building or site. And one condition is being placed on this granting of the conditional use permit, and that is for septic capacity purposes, this home business is considered to be equivalent to one bedroom of septic use. All in favor of those findings of fact and condition. Seven nothing. Thank you, Ms. Bichard. Um, and uh, next order of business is any communications? No communications. Um, we have a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All in favor? All right, seven nothing. We're adjourned. Mm -hmm.